Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I continue my series on the archetypes of Shadowrun by talking about magicians. Now, before I get into the discussion, I just want to say that magicians is an umbrella term. It covers both hermetic mages and shamans, but it also covers all the other full magical traditions. I'll get into that in a bit in the discussion, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about Full Magicians. Shadowrun has long been defined as the setting where man meets magic meets machine. And you can't have magic without magicians. Now, I need to get a definition out of the way. What is a magician? While there are adepts, who I will discuss in the next video, who can cast spells, a full magician can do all the various elements of magic. Cast spells, summon spirits, enchant items into foci, and perform alchemy but they can also do one thing that the spellcasting adepts can't they can project astrally and that is the point where they are completely different from the spellcasting adepts that's the point where they are the defining feature, really, of a magician. But, when you're talking about magicians, in Shadowrun, most people think of two things. The Hermetic Magician, or the Hermetic Mage, who is the more classical fantasy-type magician. They form their spells through arcane formula, ritualized practices, etc., etc. If you've seen Doctor Strange, you've seen Hermetics. The other tradition in Shadowrun, the other dominant tradition, is the Shaman. And on the surface, the Shaman is pretty different from the Hermetic. Their spellcasting is more about coaxing magic, so to speak. No two castings of the same spell are going to look exactly the same. And they deal in spirits in a different way from Hermetics. Hermetics in the earliest editions ritually summoned and bound spirits and could have them a whole bunch ready. A shaman would summon one spirit and they would do it right when they needed it. So this led to sort of thematic differences. In later editions, they kind of shifted a little bit away from that mechanically from 4th edition onward both shamans and hermetics are mechanically the same except for drain which I'll get to in a moment but the big thematic difference between them has always been Shamans have a totem. Hermetics don't. At least until 4th edition when universal magic theory became a thing and even hermetics could have totems. So what everyone called totems became mentor spirits. And they function identically for shamans and mages and 
Christian theurgists and druids and all the other traditions. But there's still kind of a part of for those who've played from the older editions, they're kind of a part of the shamanic archetype in our heads. I don't envision someone playing a shaman without a mentor spirit. Just because it seems wrong. It doesn't seem like they are playing a shaman. Now, starting in 4th edition, Drain Soaking became different based on your tradition. Like, Hermetics were a logic-based drain tradition, which meant they soaked drain with willpower plus logic. Shamans became a charisma-based tradition, so they soaked drain with their willpower plus charisma. You see, whenever you cast a spell, you suffer drain. This is because in the world of Shadowrun, your, the mage is using themselves as a conduit, the magician is using themselves as a conduit for the spell that they're casting. And that takes energy out of them. And so they have to resist that drain to not take damage. This damage can be stun damage if it, if the spell is of a low enough power, or it can be physical damage if basically the mage is pushing the spell beyond the limits that they can normally cast. Second and third edition, some spells had stun drain, some spells used your physical track. I'm looking at you, Hellblast. I miss Hellblast. But... The overall aspect of the mage, magicians is going to be the same. They cast spells, summon spirits, etc., etc., and can astrally project. Astral projection is the big thing. First off, astral projection is required for metaplanar access when they initiate that first time and are able to start accessing metaplanar quests as an ordeal for initiation. Or just to get information that they need. At the same time, astral projection is a way for them to scout the magical defenses of a location. See if it has flu um, any of the fab strains. Fluorescing astral bacteria, by the way, uh, is what fab stands for. See if it has vines that are meant to keep people out, or see if there are wards over various areas of the facility. In older editions, mages, magicians could do really nasty things, especially a thing called grounding. It was why carrying a focus back in second edition was a double-edged sword. You got a lot of benefits, but someone could use that focus as a means to cast an area effect spell centered on you. That was a process called grounding, and it sadly has been dropped from later editions. Again, that's one of those things I miss from the early editions, but a lot of people are glad it's gone. Of course, magicians are a varied bunch. I mentioned that there are multiple traditions, and ultimately traditions go by one of three attributes. 
at, from 4th edition onward? Logic, intuition, or charisma? And there are a lot more logic and charisma based traditions than intuition based traditions. Because there's a lot more either high magic style formulaic traditions or a lot more force of personality, i.e. charisma based traditions. There are not a lot of them that are based on going in hunches and you know just leaps of logic, leaps of intuition to do things. But that's not really the important part. What's important is starting from the late 3rd edition through 4th edition onward, magic became a lot more varied. And to me, that's one of the more important elements. It means you didn't have to try and figure out whether something was a hermetic or a shaman. It just worked its own way. That sort of opening the door to all sorts of real world magical traditions coming into Shadowrun. Of course, when you're building your magician, you have to figure out how you're going to build them. You're going to have a specialty. And this doesn't necessarily mean you have a specialization, it means you are specialized in one of the aspects of magic. For example, let's say I'm making a troll hermetic, but I don't specialize in spell casting. I mean, I have ranks in the skill, I have some mundane, some common spells, but where I really specialize with this troll is alchemy. Before, before we go on a run, my troll preps up a whole bunch of alchemical preparations. I've taken the drain for these right then, and I can use them later on. You know, healing potions, command command word detonating items, things like that. And I prep those up ahead of time. If I run out of them in the run, well, I'm SOL. But I don't have to deal with the drain over the course of the, of the run. I just have to deal with what I take when I cast them and I can do stuff to mitigate that drain outside of things. And, oh yeah, prep up a whole bunch ahead of time and heal up the drain before we go in. This is especially good with some of the stuff in late 5th edition where there's qualities I can take that let me make my preparations last a lot longer before they start losing potency. A, you could also have someone who, whose specialty is enchanting. They make foci. That's more of a money-making operation, but generally speaking, I wouldn't expect a Shadowrunner mage to be, or magician, to be using making foci a lot. Using the enchanting tree or skill group. Generally speaking, the three big skill groups for 
magicians in a Shadowrunner group are going to be spellcasting, summoning, and alchemy. And you might take enchant some grade of enchanting. It's not necessary, but these three are the big ones. With either spellcasting or alchemy tending to be the one that you're going to put the most points into. You might put the same number of points into summoning as you do whichever of the other two you take as your specialization, but for the most part you're going to be either a spellcaster or an alchemist, at least at start. And this is because you have to prioritize your skills. A magician, a full-fledged magician, has a number of skills they have to take. Remember that spellcasting includes actual spellcasting, counterspelling, and ritual spellcasting in its spellcasting group. Summoning is summoning, binding, and dispelling, or banishing. Alchemy is, well, it's a subsect of the enchanting group, but you're generally going to take alchemy. And, I said, you know, you've got those skills. And you're going to have some level in pretty much all of them. Just because you're, there's times where you're going to use any of them. You know, one or more of them. On top of that, you're going to need ranks in the Arcana skill. This is in 5th edition and onward. It's how you learn new... It's what you have to roll to learn a new spell. You're going to need ranks in Astral Perception because you're able to fully fully project and so you're going to need the, the skill that covers seeing into the Astral. A Sensing. Because you use that for your astral perception. And then you're going to need ranks in astral combat. Because if you're out of your body doing recon and a spirit or a, another mage jumps you, you want to be able to fight back. And so you have a whole bunch of skills. And this is not counting the usual Shadowrunner skills of etiquette, a defense skill, and a weapon skill. So, you've got a whole bunch of skills you have to learn. Which is why you specialize. Because you have to pick one area that you're going to be better at than the others. Because pretty much in every edition of Shadowrun, you're dealing with a one huge factor. You can't take all the skills you want. In priority based systems editions, being a magician takes a higher priority than anything else. And generally speaking, you're probably going to go with priority A for the higher magic. Or in earlier editions, just being able to be a full magician. 
you're going to be putting in earlier editions, the second and third, you're going to be putting resources up higher because resources determined your spells. Fifth edition, it was your magic rating that determined what your spells were. Your priority you signed magic to. And then, you know, you're going to be looking at, you want attributes fairly high up to increase your ability to soak drain. And it's like, you, you kind of run into this whole, this is the great conundrum of the magician in the later editions. Do I have a lot of spells? Soak drain good? Have a lot of skills in magic? Or have a lot of resources for all those expensive things like foci and you know, reagents and lodges and libraries and stuff like that? Every choice you make in building a magician is going to be something restrictive. If you're building a troll mage, in second edition, bam, troll was priority A, because to be anything other than human, you had to have that as your first priority. B was magic. And then you had C, D, and E for between attributes, resources, and skills. Fifth edition, it's, you're still putting troll as either A or B. You're putting magic as A or B because you want the higher inherent magic skills, etc., and spells. And then again, you get C, D, and E between resources, skills, and attributes. So you are really caught when you're building a magician. Now, admittedly, some races, some of the types work better than others. For example, elves are made to play shamans or any charisma based tradition because elves start off with a high charisma. No one really starts, no race starts off with a high logic or intuition, though, unfortunately. But, you are still dealing with the simple fact that building a magician, the whole process is pick your tradition, pick your meta type, and from there, everything else just follows based on the sacrifices you wish to make to make the better mage. Yeah, want to make a mage who's really skilled but can't get a lot of spells off because they have low attributes and therefore low drains resistance? Do you want to make one who can cast spells all day but isn't very good at it because he has high attributes but low skills? Yeah, want to make a mage who's focused in one thing and does that really, really well but sucks at every other aspect of being a magician. That's sort of what you have to look at when you are building your magician in Shadowrun. With that said, that will conclude my discussion on magicians. 
Next week, I will talk about adepts. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.